In this video, you're going to learn some of the naming conventions used by circadian biologists to refer to rhythmic phenomena and their properties. We'll go through some different ways of conceptualizing an organism's rhythm across time, including subjective day and night, circadian time, phase shifts, and Zeitgeber time. In order to discuss later concepts, we need to start by discussing subjective day and subjective night. Now, while as humans we're used to thinking of day and night as defined by either the sun or by a clock, within an organism there also exists an internal, rhythmic, physiological sense of day and night, capable of keeping time even without any cues from the environment, which was discussed in video one. And we call that internal, alternating cycle, subjective day and subjective night. Now, while subjective day and night occur in organisms under all conditions, we use different terms to discuss time under constant conditions and light-dark cycles. Under constant conditions, for example constant dark or constant light, there are no cues, like light transitions, to help tell what time of day it is. So the organism only has its internal, subjective, timekeeping mechanism, which we call circadian time. On the other hand, under a light-dark cycle, the organism uses cues from the environment to tell time, and aligns its internal, subjective day and night with cues it's getting from the environment, in this case, a light-dark cycle. So you use Zeitgeber time. So let's discuss how we use each of these systems of telling time a little further. Circadian time is a system of telling time based on the free-running period, or FRP, of the organism. Circadian time is used in the absence of time cues, in constant conditions, such as DD or LL. This figure shows simulated activity in a nocturnal rodent so it's a little more regular than a typical actogram. Note that this is single plotted for clarity, so we're only showing 24 hours on the x-axis. The organism can only use its internal subjective day and night to tell time, which as we discussed in video one, is imprecise. Thus, it free runs under constant conditions. So how do we tell what circadian time it is? Circadian time is based on the timing of transitions, between the organism's subjective day and subjective night, whether that organism is nocturnal or diurnal. The start of subjective day is CT0, and the start of subjective night is CT12. So, for this nocturnal organism, the start of subjective night, CT12, coincides with the start of activity, whereas it would co-occur with the start of rest for a diurnal organism. We use CT0 or CT12 as anchors, and then we can derive other times like CT14 from these reference points. That'll be covered in class in more detail. So if circadian time is based on the free running period, a cycle through subjective day and night, rarely if ever, is equal to 24 hours. You see here, if we measure the free running period of this organism, a cycle of subjective day and night equals 25.03 hours. As circadian biologists, we still want to divide that cycle into units of time, so we generate circadian hours. And we do that by taking the FRP, in this case 25.03, and dividing it by 24. In this example, we get 1.04, so each circadian hour is equal to 1.04 conventional clock hours. Thus, there are 24 circadian hours in a subjective day-to-night cycle, just as there are 24 real hours in an Earth day. Let's try something else. What if, instead of allowing it to continue to free run, we gave the organism a pulse of light early in subjective night? Well, as you saw in video one, we get what's called a phase shift. A phase shift is a change in the relative positioning of the recurrent rhythm, such as the position of the onset of activity, that occurs under the influence of some acute stimulus, such as this pulse of light. And it looks like this. In circadian biology, phi stands for phase, or what part of the rhythm is occurring at any given time. To monitor rhythms, we usually choose some portion of the rhythm that occurs predictably, and we measure when it occurs over recurrent cycles. Here, the onset of activity is very predictable, so it will be our indicator of rhythm timing, or our phase marker. Because we denote phase as the Greek letter phi, we denote a change in phase as delta phi. We can see that here, after the light pulse, 
the FRP of our organism stays the same, but it gets perturbed and shifted to the right, about 2 hours and 32 minutes later. What's more, this is a specific kind of phase shift. A phase shift can either be called an advance or a delay, depending on the direction of the shift. Because the rhythm shifted to the right of the actogram and got later or was delayed, we call it a phase delay. And we denote the magnitude of the phase delay, in this case, 2 hours and 43 minutes, as a negative value. If you're looking at an actogram and see a phase shift, an easy way to determine whether it is a delay is to remember nerd, negative, right, delay. Advances, on the other hand, are just the opposite, with positive values and shifted to the left. Now let's discuss Zeitgeber time. Zeitgeber time is a system of telling time based solely on rhythmic environmental cues, such as light dart cycles. Zeitgeber is a German word that means time giver. Light is the primary Zeitgeber for the circadian system, though there are others. So, if there's a repeated and rhythmic Zeitgeber, such as a light dark cycle, use Zeitgeber time. So what does it mean to tell time using Zeitgeber time? Here's an example. Let's start by looking at activity under a light dark cycle. So here we have a 12-12 light dark schedule. Zeitgeber time is based only on Zeitgebers, in this case, on light transitions. Now again, we're looking at a nocturnal animal here, but it's important to remember that for Zeitgeber time, it doesn't matter when the organism prefers to be active, so whether it's diurnal or nocturnal. It's just based on the cues, in this case, on the lights. We call the transition when the lights come on, ZT0, and the transition when the lights go off, ZT12. For the most part, under a light dark schedule, the circadian system will align itself to that schedule. So you can see the activity is occurring during the dark period for this nocturnal animal. And when subjective night is the same as environmental night, we call that entrainment to the light dark schedule. And that's covered in more detail in other videos. So in summary, both circadian time and Zeitgeber time are used by circadian biologists to help us ask and answer questions about the timing of an organism's rhythms, like when did this animal become active? Or how big was that phase shift? Circadian time is based on internal subjective time in constant conditions, and we use activity transitions to mark it. Zeitgeber time, on the other hand, requires a rhythmic Zeitgeber like a light dark cycle, and we use the Zeitgeber transitions, like lights on and off, to mark it. That's it for this video on circadian naming conventions. Click here to watch the next video in this series.